Welcome back to another Pre-Cal 30S video. Uh, in this one, we're gonna look at outcome R4, which is completing the square. And basically what that is, is we're gonna convert uh, the quadratic from a standard form to vertex form. And it's in section 3.3 in your textbook. Uh, a couple of key terms is a perfect square trinomial. Hopefully uh, you remember what that means from last year when we learned how to factor. Uh, and we're going to review it right away anyways. And completing the square. So that's the process of converting from standard to vertex form. Lesson 3.3, equivalent forms of the equation of a quadratic function, uh, completing the square. Basically, it transforms functions from the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c into the form f of x equals a bracket x minus h close bracket squared plus k in order to determine its characteristics. So characteristics such as the vertex is very nicely seen from this form. So you get your x value of your vertex there and your y value of the vertex right there. You get your axis of symmetry, which is found from the x value of the vertex. Uh, you could determine how, which direction our parabola opens, up or down, and how wide it is based on the a value. All right, so uh, just a review of what a perfect square trinomial, it's a trinomial that can be factored into two identical binomials. Here's an example right here. So last year when we learned how to factor, uh, we noticed that the nine here is three squared and you get six from adding those threes together. So this is a perfect square trinomial where both factors are exactly the same. It could also be written like this, x plus 3 all squared. Now, let's have a look at how we make a perfect square trinomial if we only have the first two parts. So right now, what we only have is we have an x squared and we have an 8x. So we need to figure out what this plus k is going to be. All right, now the way to do that is by taking this number right here and dividing it by two and then squaring it. Okay, so then that becomes 16. So now by completing this perfect square trinomial, we end up with x squared minus eight x plus 16. And this can be factored into x minus 4 squared. So this is our goal. We want to create, we want to make the, add in the last term so that we can perfectly factor it just like this. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so here we've got x squared minus 5x plus k. And this isn't as nice as the question before, uh, but the process is the same. So we take our b value, so we go minus 5, and then we divide it by 2 and square it. So then we have uh, 25 over 4. So our completed square version is this plus 25 over 4, and when we factor this, we end up with x minus 5 over 2 squared. Now, take a second and just notice right here, this number, same as that number, okay? All right, let's go on to the next All right, so now we're gonna look at uh, completing the square for this question here. Um, the first step that you want to do is you want to move the constant term over to the right a bit so that you have some room between the x term and the constant. So you could just see here, I just pushed it over a little bit. 
Uh, then what you want to do is you want to factor out the coefficient of the x squared. So here we've got a 2 and I factor the 2 out only from the x squared and the x term. I leave this guy alone. After that, we determine the square of half of the x term. So you take the 6, divide it by 2, and square it. So that gives you 3 squared, which is 9. Now this is completing our square. This is our perfect square trinomial that we're trying to create here. So we're going to want to put this right there. Now, the thing is, we have to keep in mind, is that when we introduce uh, a new number into uh, an equation, it, it creates an imbalance, right? It interrupts the balance of the equation. So the only way that you can actually do this is by adding in a zero. So right here, what I mean by zero is adding in uh, plus nine minus nine. So that's right here. I care about the perfect square trinomial, and that's in blue, just below here. So you see, this is my perfect square trinomial right here. And I want to rewrite that part as x minus 3 all squared, and then replace what I have here with this. So just take a minute to notice that. Now the next step we have is to isolate the perfect square trinomial. So we want this guy right here all by itself and, and you can see that there's a minus 9 in here that we need to try to get out of the bracket. Now in order to do that it's not just as simple as taking the 9 and moving it over, you have to notice that it's inside the bracket and there is a coefficient of 2 outside of that bracket. So what we need to do is we need to multiply the 9 by the coefficient that we initially factored out. So what we actually will have is y equals 2 x minus 3 squared plus 11 and we are actually taking out a minus 18. Okay, now we simplify this and rewrite the equation in vertex form and that's going to look like y equals 2x minus 3 squared minus 7. Now from here we can see that the vertex is at 3 comma negative 7 and it opens upward because of our positive a value and there you have it. it now I've got four examples coming up so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try these questions, uh, complete the square, so change each one into vertex form. Uh, so press pause, try one question, see the answer, and then move on to the next one, see how you're doing. Okay, so hit pause now and try the question. Okay, so here's the reveal. For A, uh, we have moved over the 4 so that we have a little more space here and then what you want to do is you want to factor out the coefficient in front of the x squared and and here this step is trivial because it's just a 1 so there's actually no change here uh, we just want to make sure we widen the bracket put a bracket there because we're going to fill it in next uh, take your b term that's in here and I did that scratch work over here it's 10 divided by 2 squared, so we get 5 squared, which is 25. 
I have to add a zero. If I just add the 25 in, I mess up the balance of the equation. So I enter in plus 25 minus 25 to keep it balanced. All I want is the perfect square trinomial portion, which is right there. So I bracket that off separately. And then I make sure I take out this 25 here, this minus 25. Now when I'm taking it out of the bracket, I have to remember to multiply it by the coefficient out in front. In this case, it's just one, so it's still negative 25. So I've got here my perfect square trinomial. I've got my four, which is from here, and my minus 25, which is from there. And simplify, so I rewrite this as a perfect square. So just x minus five all squared in its factored form. And simplify the constants and end up with minus 21. So my equation is y equals bracket x minus five all squared minus 21. All right, so try the next question now. All right, so try that one now. So here's the reveal for part B. Um, we start with f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 16. So f of x is just simply function notation for y equals. So we treat it exactly the same as y equals. Uh, we've got 3x squared plus 12x, and we leave a big space plus 16. And then we have uh, to factor out this 3. So we factor it out of the first two terms. We get 3 bracket x squared plus 4x. Leave this big space plus 16. And now we want to complete the square. So we take our middle term here, our b value, and we divide it by 2 and square it, and we end up with 4. So we add 4 and subtract 4 right away within the bracket. Now, in order to remove this minus 4 and put it on the outside here, we need to make sure we first multiply it by this 3 to get it out. And when we do that, it becomes minus 12. So we take our perfect square trinomial that we end up with right here. We write it as x plus 2 all squared. And we end up with our function in vertex form, which is f of x equals 3 bracket x plus 2 all squared plus 4. Okay, so a couple more questions left. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just show you the answer and you can see whether you've gotten it correct. So hope either you've already done this or you can pause it now and do this, the next two questions. So here's the answer for C. It's y equals three x minus one squared minus four. Okay, and I'll actually take you through the next example because it's just a little bit more challenging. Now here you have to be careful and make sure that you factor this negative two out properly and end up with negative two and then your bracket x squared minus five x, leave a little space and plus three. Now in order to get this here, uh, we take the five Divide it by 2 and then square it. So you get 5 over 2 squared, which is 25 over 4. And we add and subtract it right away. Now we just want to isolate our perfect square trinomial. And in order to do that, we have to kick this minus 25 over 4 out. And we need to multiply it by the negative 2 in order to do that. We end up with 25 over 2. So just be careful with your fractions, your signs, and all that stuff. And we finally end up with f of x equals minus 2, x minus 5 over 2 all squared, plus 31 over 2. All right, so hopefully that went well. Now, here's a challenge question. So we're going to have a look at the solution to this in class. I'll give you a hint, though. Uh, you need to factor out this 
negative one half out of the x squared. So when you do that, what are you actually left with right here? That's probably the most difficult part of this question. And to make sure that you did this correctly, multiply it back through to verify your answer. And now, uh, have fun with the homework questions here. So make sure you try them, uh, try a few, and if you have any questions, ask, please. Okay, good luck.